Welcome everyone. Hi, my name is Dr. Alex Wynn, um, and welcome to the first ever virtual conference. You know, I've given these lectures multiple times, but I'm going to tell you this is uncharted waters for me. Um, every time I've given a lecture in the past, the unfortunate thing is I always give it and it's just me. Today is totally different. I think that one of the disservices that we have in our program is that we don't have enough of a reflection on all the people that are involved. And I think that, and from my standpoint, I could not do my job without them. I promise you, it's like the world of difference. And so for today, I wanted to take the opportunity to put a twist on things. Instead of just listening to me, I wanted to bring in the people who make things happen for me. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that we want to welcome you all for the first virtual conference and by all means if you have any questions please please just look at the very bottom there's a chat box for you to uh enter your questions and we're going to address them and please anyone that you meet today on the team that you have a specific question for them please uh address it um with that being said well, i want to start off by introducing my team so first person up Hello, everybody. My name is Lacey Miranda, and I'm Dr. Wynn's PA, or his right-hand lady. Um, I kind of help him make sure things go smooth. Um, not only, you know, during surgery, I'm, I'm there helping him make sure that the surgery goes smooth, but also um, I'll be seeing you for your monthly visits leading up to surgery, um, and then also seeing you in the hospital after surgery and all of your post-op visits then. Um, as of right now, and this is new for me, I am the only um, advanced practitioner that's been certified for obesity medicine in our whole network. So, um, you know, working even outside of office hours to help me be the best provider that I can be for, for you guys. Um, so uh, being a part of Dr. Wynn's team is awesome and taking care of you guys. Um, so I'll let the next person go. Hello everyone, my name is Renee and I'm Dr. Wynn's uh, triage nurse. I am the one that you will see prior to seeing Dr. Wynn. I take your vitals and I get you into your room and I just try to help out with the other ladies on the team wherever I can. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, um, my name is Jennifer Way and I'm the dietitian for our bariatric program. So what my role is, um, I help all of our patients prepare for the diet after they have surgery, you know, what they can eat, how much they can eat, what they can drink, and I will see you every month until you're ready for surgery and also follow up um, post-surgery um, as well. Um, I also see patients um, for non-surgical weight loss who's interested in, you know, on one-on-one -on -one nutritional counseling where I can customize the diet based on the individual's um, medical conditions, their dietary preferences, and their um, amount of weight loss that they're interested in. We also have a um, another uh, medically supervised weight loss um, program called OptiFast, which is a meal replacement program for individuals who want something more structured. It's also medically supervised by Dr. Wynn, and I also see the patient uh, for nutrition education. So, yeah. <laughs> Hi everybody, um, I'm Katie. I am the team surgical scheduler. And um, so the first thing I do is um, verify that you have coverage for bariatric surgery, and then I can schedule you to join our program. And then um, you'll hear from me again when it's time to schedule you for your surgery. Um, and we'll get you all set up for that and your pre and post visits as well. Hi, my name is Leslie, and I'm the coordinator for our bariatric program. I am a licensed registered nurse, and I'm actually a certified bariatric nurse. I've been a nurse for over 12 years, and the entire time I pretty much eat, sleep, and breathe bariatrics. My job is to help you get your appointment started, answer questions. I call and check up on you before you come to your appointments. If you've got stumbling blocks, you have a rough day, you can literally call and kind of chat with me to get over it. And pretty much I'm just kind of here, there to troubleshoot anything and get you ready for your surgery. Hi, my name is April Robinson. I am a licensed practical nurse. I have worked with Dr. Wynn for five and a half years. I am pretty much his right-hand nurse in clinic. I will be one of the first 
nurses you see when you come in for your first visit. I will be one of the voices you'll hear if you have any questions pre or post-operatively. Um, I can help you in any way, answer questions, email, whatever you need. Thank you. All righty, thank you ladies. Um, as you can see, we have a ton of people involved in your care. Um, so again, this is the first time we've ever done a virtual conference and um, forgive me uh, as we're gonna like freelance a lot of things, but I think in every lecture that I've ever given on this topic is basically you have to cover certain things. Um, and just to kind of understand everything, I get it that when it comes to obesity and morbid obesity and all the comorbidities with it. I mean, the biggest question is, is like, what's out there for me? Because not everyone wants surgery. Not everyone wants to see a doctor or see a dietitian. And, you know, the reality is, is that when you're looking at it statistically where every three people, you have someone who's morbidly obese, every three people, you have someone who has a risk of dying earlier at 400%. It is a uh, population health issue. So our goal today is obviously to educate and introduce you to the team. So by all means, if you have any questions for me or any of my team members, go ahead and type it in, type it in. So one of the things that I wanted to make a point and patients, whether they, they come to see us for losing five pounds or 150 pounds, it's hard to kind of put it in um, basically conception. So I brought something this. So you know that when people talk about losing weight, you talk about losing, hey, I want to lose 10 pounds or hey, I need to lose 150 pounds. My diabetes is bad. My blood pressure is bad. But if you were to look at this, that's pretty impressive. But when people look at that and you kind of understand like the size of it and your perception of what it really is, they may think it's what, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, whatever. But in reality, this thing, as big as it is, it's only five pounds. So when you talk about going on a specific program with um, Jennifer and losing 10 to 30 pounds, 10 to 30 pounds is very impressive, being conservative. And so the options that I'll talk about, first of all, what we offer has nothing to do with surgery, okay? The dietary counseling that she offers, I mean, she sees a lot of patients with renal issues, diabetes, and she caters towards those type of people. Uh, but if you're the patient who's like, you know what, I've tried that before, I've done that before, and it, it's just not for me. I think the next level, as anyone would agree, is, is maybe something structured, something of the meal replacement plan, which she mentioned before, OptiFast. And I can tell you the results of after OptiFast is really nice. So if you're looking at losing that 10 to 30 pounds with a reasonable um, you know, degree of like risk in, involved, I think it's the perfect plan because one, you don't necessarily have to see me if we can keep your calories a certain amount, but if you do see me, it's good because I can keep an eye on your progress and make sure that you, everything is appropriate. Um, outside of surgery, um, the non-surgical piece, uh, patients sometimes need surgery. And those patients are the ones that obviously when you see them in walkers, wheelchairs, they can barely stand without hurting. Uh, you know, patients who know how it feels to roll out of bed carrying a weight of a whole nother person by the end of the day, be begging for mercy because they're hurting. Those are the ones that should strongly consider surgery. If you're a diabetic and and you're overweight and medicines is just not working for you, those are the patients who should be considered uh, for surgery. Now, outside of obvious things like that, I know patients, they want to know, well, what surgeries are there for me? Um, well, you know, you've heard of the gastric bypass, the sleeve gastrectomy, and the band. And I can tell you, not one surgery is right for all. And when, when you come see us, not only do you get evaluated by all of us, but my thorough evaluation of you is basically, it starts from before the visit. You literally feed me a ton of information through our um, our packet and whatnot, and I digest all that information. You and I will have a one-on-one -on -one from day one, and basically, I'm trying to gather everything as objective as possible. And at the very end of the day, I can tell you there's a thousand factors that come into play in my mind when it comes to deciding what's right as far as like success, long term, you know, uh, maintaining weight loss and getting off the medicines that you really want. Right. So not all surgeries are built the same. 
Um, for instance, you know, if you're looking for uh, an intermittent weight loss, then I think a sleeve gastrectomy is a good uh, procedure. Patients fall in love with it. It's a simple surgery to wrap your brain around. It's removing 80% of your stomach. And guess what? You feel full quicker eating a lot less. You don't feel hungry. And you can expect about losing about 50% of your excessive weight, which is phenomenal. So make, for example, someone who may weigh 100 pounds overweight, you're losing 50 to 60 pounds in that situation. So 50 to 60% is what I would expect. Now, the patients who are dealing with the uncontrolled diabetes, the terrible reflux, patients who are, like, like I said, debilitated by their weight and they're hobbling around, those patients need something a lot more robust, like the gastric bypass. And the simple thing, just to kind of keep it very concise, the, the gastric bypass works by multiple mechanisms. Uh, one, a tiny little pouch that gives you feedback soon that you're getting full and malabsorption, as well as like hormonal changes, believe it or not, that actually make you healthier the night of surgery. Uh, patients may not know this, but diabetes is not cured on weight loss. It's not cured on weight loss. Diabetes occurs the night of surgery. When, when you get rerouted, healthy hormones are being produced, unhealthy hormones are being suppressed. So there is a metabolic magic to it, so to speak. So that's one thing that, that I try to like decipher first time I ever meet patients. And it's all about gathering information. It's all about educating because none of us, none of us in this whole team want a patient to go through the process and feel uncomfortable about it or not know what they need to know. Because the one thing we all emphasize is education. Education is what is uh, going to prevent uh, patients from being scared. Education is what's going to uh, allow patients to maintain their expectations, whether it's weight loss, getting off medications or whatnot. Now, I just named two big extremes. You know, you went from the non-surgical with the dietitian, maybe replacement uh, meals and whatnot, to the other extreme, surgeries. Uh, obviously, surgeries are not always um, indicated. And sometimes patients just don't desire surgery. I mean, I've had patients come in and say, listen, I've tried the diets, I've tried the OptiFast, I've tried this, I've tried the pills, but I'm just not ready for the surgery. And what are your options? Well, you know, there, there, there are certain options that are available that people may not be uh, aware of. And one of the coolest things that we actually have is actually this thing. And whether you can see it or not, it's pretty cool, okay? It's basically a gastric balloon. And if, if I can describe what it looks like or what it is, it looks like a silicone balloon. It looks like a ball. I don't want to drop it. Uh, I don't think it will break. But it's filled with saline, so it's very neutral. So when I put this in, it's not even surgery. I do an endoscopy. And wh when I put you to sleep, I go in, I literally will inflate this balloon inside your stomach. So if you can imagine how this little thing works, it's basically filled up with 700 cc's to 900 cc's of saline. And it basically takes up space in your stomach. Therefore, you just eat less. In addition, patients notoriously are feeling full all the time, where they just do not feel like eating. And this thing is not a permanent thing. Like I said, it's not surgical, meaning that once this is placed, you're basically following the dietitian intensely for six months before. And then after the six months of the balloon being placed, I remove it. I remove the balloon. And then you get another six months of intensive um, treatments with the dietitian. Uh, what we've seen with a balloon is that you can expect 30 to 50 pounds of weight loss. Now, that's very comparable to some of the surgeries that have been done in the past, which you don't do anymore. I mean, people have heard of the lap band. And honestly, the lap band back in this day used to be the latest and greatest. And people thought that it was the answer to all your problems. Um, well, back in the day, that may have been the case. But today, in modern times, we have more information about it. And I can tell you the band has fallen so far out of favor that you'll have a hard time finding someone who places it. This thing, believe it or not, with all the literature and all the proof that we have, the data shows that you can actually lose a comparable amount of weight with a surgery, the lap band. Now, just kind of being upfront about it, you're not going to lose as much weight with a sleeve. You're not going to lose as much weight with the bypass unless you're just that rock star. And we all know the differences between the A minus students or the B plus students and the A plus students, you know. So if you're that patient who says, hey, listen, all I need is the right tool, something that's reasonable for me, and I'll run with it, then that may be the right tool for you.
okay? But again, this is all about the individual patient. This is not about a cookie cutter mentality with it. And, and there's pros and cons with all these things, you know? There's pros and cons with just doing the diet. There's pros and cons with doing surgery. And there's pros and cons with this thing as well. But at the end of the day, again, this is our goal. Get rid of, get, getting rid of this bad boy. So with that being said, you know, I, I'm very passionate about bariatrics. Um, you know, I was fellowship trained in this. And honestly, just to give you some background, I wasn't initially interested in it, truthfully. Yeah, when I did my fellowship 12, no, it's 14 years now. <laughs> well, it's been a while. Let's just put it that way. Uh, I was introduced into bariatrics and I did the surgery and the surgery was technically fun. But I can tell you the one thing that, that really got me sold was that when I witnessed things like diabetes, reflux, and medical issues that were seemingly, seemingly being cured, and I want to use that word strongly, but it does appear that way, being cured almost immediately with surgery, with zero associated weight loss, that was intriguing. And with that being said, I, I, I bit the, the bait, hook, line, and sinker, and ever since then, this has been my life. Uh, I've dedicated my practice towards bariatrics, reflux, advanced foregut. You know, we, we take care of a lot of patients who never had surgery, but unfortunately, there's a lot of patients who've had surgeries other places, and they call us asking for help, and we, we try to do our best to take care of everyone. Um, but you know what? I can't do it without my team, and my team is, is, is the best part of my practice, honestly, and, and I know that I'm blessed to have them. They do a great job and they make my life a lot easier um, because they're helping me take care of you potentially. With that being said, I, I still wanna encourage you, if you have any questions, please um, please text in. We have a question? A few questions um, coming from the group. Um, the first one, is the non-surgical weight loss covered by NGHS insurance? The answer is no. Um, well, Jennifer, why don't you come um, up and address it? So if it's um, like for nutritional counseling, then they would have to check with their insurance plan to see if it's covered. But if they're interested in the OptiFast program, that is going to be self-pay. Mm -hmm. um, what would step one be um, to, to make an appointment? Excellent. Excellent question. You know, we get patients from all directions, whether you do it online, um, you get a free seminar you can witness. Once you complete the seminar, it all automatically sends us an email or contact your contact information, and then we reach out to you. Sometimes we get referrals from doctors, which I prefer because I like to stay in communication with the doctor that's sending me. And then you can make an appointment by calling our office and, and we'll facilitate the educational process. You know, your education starts way before you even start uh, the, um, the process uh, coming to the office. We, we send you the links and everything to try to facilitate that. Uh, but outside of that, we, I mean, we, we have patients come in as referrals, people who are self-referrals, people who are finding us online, people who are going through the hospital. So there's several mechanisms on how to get in with us. Okay, here's another question. Um, I'm looking at dropping about 30 pounds and looking into a meal replacement program, but I have asthma and could afford to lose weight, um, afford to lose the weight. Um, which meal or meals should I replace to optimize my goal? Um, I'll, I'll let Jennifer help me answer this question. Um, it depends on what you're talking about and your expectations, because obviously when you're talking about counseling versus meal replacement versus anything uh, procedural wise, there's a huge difference. Uh, 30 pounds is actually dependent on what your starting weight would be as well, because you know, you, you've heard this before, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Well, similarly, the higher your weight, the more likely you're going to lose weight. So 30 pounds in someone who, say, 200 pounds overweight is going to be very reasonable with intervention or certain interventions. But if you're asking for 30 pounds in a person who's only, say, 35 pounds overweight, it's going to be a lot more resistant. So anything you want to add to that, Jennifer, would you say? Okay. 
Hey, could you talk a little bit about what support um, you offer um, to a patient after surgery to stay on the right track? Excellent. Oh, I love that question. So in case you guys didn't hear, I, I, I like that question so much, I'm going to repeat it, okay? The question is, is what kind of support do we have as a program to help keep our patients on track, help keep our patients safe, help keep our patients successful long-term? Uh, like I said before, the beginning part is all about education, and part of the education is through support group meetings. And so after the, the surgery, it's about support group meetings as well, because I truly believe in that model of like everyone being a family. So when you're sitting in that meeting and you see a bunch of other people who've had surgery and it's like having a big brother or big sister go through the process, it's nice picking up those tips from them and say, oh yeah, that's a great idea. I'm gonna keep that in mind or no, I'm not gonna do that. But long-term after the surgery, you're gonna be the role model, right? You're gonna be the one who's expressing it. Long-term after surgery, we actually have patients following up every year okay in the first follow-up it's only uh one week after the surgery then after that it's six weeks and then it's uh six months and then at the one year mark and you're not done i tell patients all the time i own you for the rest of your life because i want to stay in touch with you i want to make sure everything's good so patients see me annually during that time i'm making sure that there's no nutritional issues I'm making sure that the vitamin levels are appropriate and the mineral uh, levels are appropriate. So it, it means a lot to me that patients come back to see me for that reason alone, even if I'm not planning any procedures whatsoever. Um, and in fact, one of the things I, I truly sincerely mean is this, like, it's a big, big deal for me when I see my patients long-term. I get it when patients are doing well, they, they don't feel like they need to see the doctor, but it reminds me when the patients who are coming back who are happy, they've lost that kind of weight, I can give them that kind of encouragement. And and and, and rightfully the opposite, patients who are struggling a little, a little bit, you know, it's like they've fallen off the wagon, they've forgotten how to eat. You know, I bring them back in so that I can say, hey, listen, this is what we need to do for you. This is what who we need to send you to, whether it's a dietitian or a BC medical specialist, or, you know, just having a, a conversation with me to kind of remind them, well, I think this is where we need to get you back on track, you know, and, and by all means, it's, it's about safety as well. If you have something going on, I want to know about it sooner or later, uh, but it's all about kind of keeping tabs on you all the time to make sure that things are heading in the direction that you like. Okay, is there a service that you and your team can do for someone who is unemployed and has no insurance? A 62-year-old male um, with diabetes and overweight, about 80 pounds. Wow, that's that's a heartbreaking story. And I wish I could say that that was the only case. I, I don't know if the viewers are hearing you. I mean, they can hear the question. Okay, perfect. So I don't have to repeat it. You know, one of the, the most difficult thing about my job is that we get a lot of requests for help. And there's, a, I mean, we want to take them all on. Um, my best advice for a patient in that situation is, is that it's difficult for us uh, to get surgeries approved for that. Uh, it's difficult for us to get procedures approved for that because we we don't just go through our office. We have to go through hospital and things like that. So, so there's costs uh, from that reason that we can't maintain. But I mean, there's programs that we are trying to kind of facilitate in increasing not only awareness of obesity, but providing that education and maybe some support to patients who can't afford it as well. Um, now that we're in a brand new facility, and I can tell you, I mean, you can't see it, but this classroom is phenomenal. And having everything to our disposal, we're hoping to develop a much more mature program where we actually have someone who's certified in fitness training, you know, and maybe be able to provide that kind of service to those patients to help them from the exercise standpoint. Having the dietitian formulate a plan that's conducive to someone who doesn't have money or charity. Um, I, I, I also know that the BC medical specialists that we deal with, we actually have pathways helping patients who don't have money potentially getting certain medications that they, they, they can afford or maybe getting through their, you know, through charity of some sort. So there's, there's things out there that we can try, but there's no promises on certain things. Uh, unfortunately, that's just true. But very good question. Okay. Um... Here's another question. Um, what safety measures is your office taking um, as far as everything related to coronavirus? Oh, I was anticipating that question. 
I was anticipating that question. Well, I, I appreciate that question because it segues to a piece that I was going to say at the very end, but I'll say it now. You know, coronavirus is something that none of us asked for, okay? None of us. And unfortunately, it's something that we're all involved with. And I'll be honest with you, I'm one of the first ones uh, two months ago when this all came about. You can ask me uh, time and time again, I'll tell you, safety of myself, my family, my coworkers, they come first. And so with that being said, there's a lot of things that patients or people in general don't understand about the precautions, the protocols. I mean, we have weekly uh weekly meetings where we're constantly being updated on protocols and guidelines and things like that, purely for the safety, not only for our patients, but ourselves. So I'll be the first one to admit that a month ago or so, you wouldn't find me in the clinic. But me being here now, I know that it's, it's safe. We take all precautions. If you haven't noticed in this whole lecture, everyone's wearing masks. You're probably not seeing them right now. Everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's keeping their distance. We're being very respectful because there's a couple of things that I know that's true. Whether you're comfortable with it or not comfortable with it, I have to deal with patients the exact same way every single time. I tell them the same thing. Hey, it's nice to meet you. I would shake your hand, but I'm going to be polite and not do it. Okay. And that's different. And I tell them, you know what, this is different for me because I'm a, a very... I try to be very personal with people, but I have to respect patients and potential people with their fears because no one knows what level of concern they have with this. Uh, but as far as like our protocols, from the time you get checked in, everyone's got to spread apart. We have such a nice facility now with many exam rooms that we actually facilitate. As soon as you check in, we're going to try to get you into our room. So you're going to be in a room by yourself uh, quickly. We're all requesting and requiring everyone to wear masks. So everyone from the staff to the patients, everyone will be wearing masks. Um, after each and every visit, the room gets wiped down. And we, we, we respect the amount of time that is needed so that everything can be cleaned before the next patient will get in. Um, I think that in addition to that, you know, we're being very cautious in, in the office, but the, the hospital, I, I'm telling you right now, you have a better chance of getting coronavirus going to Walmart than you would going to the hospital. And I get it that when patients are kind of reserved on like kind of stepping out and kind of extending themselves to something, it, it, it's true though. I mean, if you're sick or you need help or whatnot, don't let coronavirus prevent you from seeking for that. Um, in the hospital itself, everyone gets tested for coronavirus before they even step in if you're having a procedure. And, and the same thing as similar to the office, if you're having a procedure, well, guess what? Everything has to get be cleaned, sterilized, and wiped down, and they'll leave the room for a period of time before they allow the next patient to come in. So we're taking all precautions, and we're, we, we stay on top of all the updates. Okay, we have another question. Does age have anything to do with getting help? Well, yes, uh, to a small degree. Uh, one, it depends on which end of the spectrum you're talking about. Right now, if you're under 18, you're consider, um, you know, um, childhood, having childhood obesity. Those patients are best accommodated by either what Jennifer can do from a conservative standpoint, because we respect our accreditation for weight loss surgery, but that only applies in adults, so 18 and older. So those patients, we usually divert to basically Jennifer or one of our obesity medical specialists who can focus on adolescent obesity or childhood obesity. Now, that requires a lot of psychotherapy and, 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 and behavioral health that we have involved in our program as well. They're not located in our building, but we have uh, access to that. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, I can tell you the oldest person I've ever done was 83 years old, and I don't regret it one bit. Physiologically, um, and there's, there's, there's data to show this, even in older patients, the risk of complications is no higher than a younger patient. Statistically, it's true. And our patients, uh, they all get screened, whether you're 21 or 81. They get screened the same way. So we, we clear you from the cardiac standpoint. We clear you from every... Um, issue that we can possibly think of that you may have having surgery or not having surgery. So I, I've done older patients and, and frankly, we do a lot of Medicare and Medicare patients are, you know, traditionally older than the average. So answer your question, I go as high as in the 80s, but it's not even limited to that. It's based on their physiology 
uh, and based on other factors. Okay, I think this is going to be the last question, okay. but um, I read that you guys recently moved um, your Gainesville office to Medical Park 2, and I'm just wondering, um, is it um, a comfortable space for an obese person to come and visit the office? Boy, whoever asked that question is just teeing me up big time. Uh, no, I appreciate that question because one thing that I cannot do on this lecture, which I'm gonna take a chance to try to create that image for you. Our, our new building is a dream, okay? And if anyone knows the building that I was in before, we did everything we could to accommodate our patient of size, so to speak. I mean, we had a wheelchair ramp that allowed a different entry. We had a larger scale. We had uh, a bariatric bed, but I can tell you it wasn't the best scenario. In our brand new facility, I can tell you, it's like contemporary straight lines, beautiful. The, the first thing I could tell you for whether you're in a wheelchair, a walker, or you can barely walk, everything is level ground. From the time you get out of your car from the parking lot to the time you get into the elevator, coming up to the top floor, everything's level ground. It, once you get off the elevator, imagine this beautiful scenery of pure glass, you know, mountains and trees, but the furniture that we have is uh, ASMBS uh, approved and accredited as far as what we need to accommodate our patients. So the furniture that we purchase and provide for our patients are especially for patients of size. From the time that you leave the, um, the waiting room, you walk through widened doorways, right? So in case you have wheelchairs, and we even have a rear door on our elevator in case you can't even fit through that, someone who needs to be in a stretcher. God forbid. So there's there's access to the office even from that. Our triage area is is protected. We sincerely believe in obesity sensitivity. So we don't want patients kind of looking at your weight or other people passing by looking at your weight. So there's a special place where you'll be weighed and your vitals will be taken. And all our exam rooms are equipped with bariatric beds that can sustain up to 600 pounds. Uh, our scale. If you happen to be someone who can't stand up because of your weight, uh, we can actually roll the wheelchair on top of the scale and weigh it. So the facility is, is, is the, the sad news is, is that in our old office, we kind of added to it to make do with what we needed for our bariatric patients. Here, this was from conception. We had this before it was, the ground was even broken. This was planned for the very get-go, uh, designed to cater towards our bariatric patients. So I'm very proud of the facility. And if you guys ever, even if you want just to drop by and take a look, I would highly encourage you. You will be blown away. I mean, this facility has a classroom where we're doing our lecture at. We have a pharmacy. There's several layers of like uh, internal medicine, um, family medicines in the building as well. We're, we're heavily involved in GME. So there's a lot of good things in this uh, facility. So I hope you guys will take the opportunity to at least visit. And when you drive by, just try not to gasp because it is nice. It is really nice. Any other questions? Questions that we have today, Dr. Wren. Awesome, awesome. So, you know, again, I want to conclude um, this lecture because this is the first. Obviously, I love the opportunity of like speaking. I would speak to that wall if it would listen. But in, in this concept that I'm trying to express today, though, is this this is not just about a surgeon, this is truly about a team. And, and I know these girls are very modest, but I can tell you that each and every one of them, I would not be able to do what I do without them. Um, I said at the very beginning, and I'll say at the very end, um, I think what sets us apart, and, and you know, surgery, and I say this sincerely, surgery is actually the easy part. The hardest part about taking care of a patient from start to finish is having all the right people, having the right messaging, communicating well. And it, from the moment you hear April's sweet voice, when you hear her or when you're concerned that things are not going through and you're you're talking to Leslie and she's checking off things on the checklist or when you have that special question to the dietitian on hey am I supposed to be eating this or not I mean you can see where we're all involved you know having Katie our financial guru hey listen 
I've got this weird insurance. Is this good or bad? You know, and that those are legitimate questions that patients sometimes, you know, kind of hesitate to seek in help. Renee, I know she's not going to brag, but like I said, she's a certified fitness um, in fitness, and and she's going to be involved in like teaching our patients from that standpoint. And I cannot say enough about my PA, my sweet Lacey. She is like my right hand girl. She is smooth in the OR. She is good at what she does before and after surgery. So as you can see, it's a team concept. And so I, I would never, ever, ever, ever want to sell this as purely a, a one-man team. It's truly one man and several women. <laughs> so with that being said, I really appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Uh, hopefully you guys have questions. If you still have more questions, feel free to forward it to us. Um, we'll try to display phone number, contact information. So if you guys, you know, after this is down, you guys could view us again on Facebook, right? And, and get your questions to us. And don't be shy. Uh, don't be shy. I get it that this is a crazy time for us all with coronavirus. But I, I want to encourage you to basically be safe, protect yourself, protect your family. And we're all going to get through this. It's just we just have to be smart about it. That's all. Thank you again.